Hi, I'm Lima Milan. In this video, we're going to look at setting up templates in Ableton Live. So by default, we're used to a template. It's just a plain template. When we open up Ableton Live, we will have two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. There's no content and there's no instruments loaded already. What we're going to do is look at the different things we might want to consider having on our loading status. So the first thing to look at is the tempo of our project. Maybe you work in a certain style of music. So let's say if it was drum and bass, it might be 172 that you want it to be at. So this is something you can pre-configure and it just stops you doing repetitious changes to a project upon opening them up. Another thing might be particular instruments you know you always reach for. Drag them in beforehand, either have them preloaded with the preset that you might like to start from, or at least give them the designated function in your project. So it could be I have a bass instrument. Maybe I like to use analog for my pads. So I give it the name pads. And audio tracks could be one that's designated for SFX. And there could be another one that's designated for vocal recording. On that vocal recording track, maybe there's certain plugins that I know I just always reach for when dealing with this. It could be I tidy it up with an EQ and then I will compress it, maybe with the glue compressor. And then finally, uh, it could be that I even just have the reverb already turned up on that track. So when the vocals recorded, it immediately sounds like it's, you know, in keeping with the actual project and its uh, tonality as well. So we've got tempo, we've got things that we have on the track. Let's have a look at the, the master. So perhaps we always like to have a spectrum on there for analysis. So we have that in place, maybe have it expanded, ready to go. If you like working into mix bus processing, so processing that's on your actual main mix at all times, maybe you have like a tube before the analyzer, just so we make sure we see the results of these processes, but we have like a tube on there. Um, again, it could be something like a, a glue compressor as well. And perhaps the multiband might be there as a default as well. It could be that they're on, it could be that they're turned off, but they're just there ready loaded for you to use as, as you habitually make more and more music and you realize what it is you wanna have in place before you start. Now, at this point, if I think everything's as it is, I can go to preferences, go to save. It's asking me, do I want to override the, in this case, the preset the uh, template that Ableton Live always starts you up with. If I click OK, now that's been saved. And now when I go to New, everything is loaded exactly the same way as it was before when I'd saved it as my template. So as well as having everything set in a way that we like to have it for processing instruments and things on our master bus and so on. We can also think about having content in there too. So it could be pre-given MIDI clips that make sense for the type of production that you go for. It could be actual audio clips that you like to use. So for instance, maybe I have a track in my template and it's called kick drums because I like making kick drum orientated music. And either in session view or in arrangement view, I have a particular range of pre loaded sounds. So just a way of getting a lot of speed. It could even be that I have a lot of sort of empty clips in my project that represent the song sections that need to be populated every time I make this style of music. It's, it's whatever you feel that you need to have in there. So when we save our template document in this case, so again, live preferences, go to the file and folder and click save. When we load it the next time, so again, I'll do Command and N this time to do a new project. Our files are loaded in there, but what it isn't doing is pre-collecting these to be stored within our live library. What it's doing is still referring to the location of those samples. So one thing to be aware of is if you have a template that refers to, let's say these samples that I've got on my uh, desktop here, if you actually remove those and, and fully remove them from the computer, Just be aware that if we do new, so we're creating a template again, if we've deleted the actual origin of the file, those files won't be loaded into the template itself. Other additional stuff that can be saved into our project could be that you have certain monitoring options on your mix bus. So it, uh, let's say audio effects, you have a utility on the very end of your 
Mixbus chain and it's set to mono, you go to key mapping and you always set that to be the one key because you always want to check your mix in mono. So again, if you save your template, those kinds of mappings or MIDI mappings as well will be saved within the template too. So that's one way of doing templates and that's the integrated way of doing templates within Ableton Live. Another option would be to create genre specific templates and they'd actually be Ableton Live sets and we load those every time we want to start in that style of music. But one important thing we need to do is make sure that those projects themselves aren't able to be overwritten so that we're not accidentally overwriting with the new song we've made each time. So let's go from a, a similar starting point. So I've got different parts in here. Uh, let's say that for this particular style of music, again, I want to have some pre-given MIDI clips. Maybe there's some pre-given kind of information in there. Maybe it's drum beats for a, a drum track and so on for the style of music that I have. Again, there's a particular tempo setting. What we can do instead is go to File and Save Live Set. We'll save it to the desktop and we'll call, this is 140, so I'm just going to call it Dubstep Template. And one thing we can do here, which is slightly different from the default template system, is we can do File and Collect All and Save. And as long as we make sure all the checkboxes are there for external files, when we do that, the folder that's created around this Ableton Live set we're saving now will have files from different locations you may have brought in to get your, your template ready. And therefore, as long as that folder that contains this template uh, Ableton Live set exists, all the other parts will be in that folder too, so you won't lose those samples. So I'm going to go to the location of this. This is my dubstep, dubstep template project. And inside right now, we can see the actual .als file and the surrounding folder. You'll see a samples folder if you have additional audio files in your project and you do the collect all and save. That will all be here. Now, at the moment, I can hit save when I make a change at any point. And we don't want that because it's supposed to be a template document. So if I actually go and go to get info here, what I can do instead is go to locked. And what this will do is lock the file. So I can double click this, go to Ableton Live, that's loaded up my template file. And then if I go to save, I don't have the option. It's a locked file. So I'll have to intentionally now save it either with a new name or in a different location. If I try and do it as the same name, it won't let me because it's right protected, it's been locked. So this is the point where you may have you know, gotten the vibe of what you're doing. You started off with your template. You've gotten to a point where you've got an idea going, you think, oh, I'll go save. So you do save, but it won't actually let you do it. It says it's locked. So you go, oh yes, it's a template. So you can go to save live set as, and it would make sense at this point that you then go to somewhere outside of this template folder. So go to my main desktop and just give it a name that works. So song one and maybe the date or a working title for it as well. Once you do that, that's set up in terms of being saved as an Ableton Live set. If we can close that down now, that's my dubstep song one. And the same principle applies. If you want to make sure that any new samples and external files that you brought into your project aren't going to get fragmented across your drive and potentially deleted accidentally or lost, the key thing to do is make sure that we go to File, Collect All and Save and make sure any external files that we add to that template project as we're making it into an actual song get collected alongside that Ableton Live set. So we've looked at two key different methods here, how we can use the integrated single template in Ableton Live and how that behaves in terms of file location and so on. And then we've looked at how we can create actual Ableton Live sets but lock them so they can serve as one of potentially many different templates across the different styles of music that we want and how we can then have that locking behavior prompt us when we've started making an idea to go and save it somewhere else, give it a name, and make sure that we also collect any new additional files alongside it so nothing gets lost.